Many of our videos have either focused on a particular feature of Odin or on a larger project created with Odin. In this video, we wanted to take some time and show how Odin makes even small and simple code better and easier to use. We're going to look at a few different examples, all of which could be commonly used. Our focus will not be on the mechanics of these examples, but on how Odin makes them easier to use. And of course, we'll have a link for the code in the description below if you want to take a closer look. Let's get started with a character controller, as these are frequently created for a wide variety of game genres. We can start with adding an instance of Unity's character controller. In order for the character to function, this controller will be required, and it seems reasonable that that controller will either be on the same object or on a child object. To make these things easier for a designer, or just as a reminder, we can enforce both these restrictions with a couple of Odin attributes. Next, we may want to be able to set the maximum speed and the acceleration of the character. Since these two values conceptually go together, we can group them into a horizontal group. Then to add a dash of formatting, we can add a slider, alter the label width, and give the values appropriate physical units with a suffix label. Some games allow two or more jumps from a character before they land back on the ground. So a range attribute on an integer can be used to limit or control the number of jumps. The height of the jump or double jump can be set using float values. Each of those can then have a restriction for a minimum value of zero, as it doesn't make much sense to have a negative jump height. We can also add units with a suffix label, and finally, we can control the visibility based on the number of allowed jumps. With just a few extra attributes, our inspector is looking better, and we've added functionality and ease of use. Now, it's not uncommon in games for those characters to have weapons, so let's move on to a second example and take a look at what that might look like. The weapon might include an icon to be shown in an inventory or some other sort of UI element. We can add the icon to a horizontal group for organization, then add a preview field, hide the label, and then give it a nice looking title. The weapon will also need a name, which we can add to the horizontal group and make part of a new vertical group as well. We can also make a couple of adjustments to the label, like so. A description of the weapon can also be added to the vertical group. And to make it a bit easier to edit, we can add a text area attribute to increase the minimum number of lines shown in the inspector. Next, our weapon needs a projectile prefab to shoot, and we'll come back to that in a bit after we create the bullet class. Of course, our weapon will need a custom animation. We'll need reference to an animator, which will be required, and will either be on the same object or on a child object. So again, what we're creating isn't necessarily something you would add directly to your project, but we want to show what can be done quickly and easily with Odin and the benefits of using Odin. Now, after creating a character controller and a weapon, we next need a bullet or a projectile. Let's add a vector 2 to serve as a range of possible damage values. This could add some variability over a simple set value for the damage. We can then add a min max slider to easily adjust the range of possible values in the inspector. And of course, weapons can do a variety of different types of damage, which we can describe with an enum and an instance of that enum. With the enum, we don't need any extra attributes and can just enjoy the nice formatting provided by Odin. The projectiles in the game may have a range of speed, so let's create a variable for the speed, but let's also give it a minimum value. We can do the same with a spread value that could be used to calculate the effective accuracy of the projectile. With the bullet class complete, we can add an instance to the gun example like so. Then adding a required attribute helps ensure that this field is assigned and an inline editor allows editing and viewing of the prefab settings. Since the bullet will be a prefab, we can add an asset list attribute to make sure a scene object isn't accidentally selected. And finally, we can add a little visual buffer with a space attribute. A custom label whose text changes based on the value and the name of the prefab will also add a nice bit of polish. Let's look at one more example and a great use case for Odin. In a lot of games, you may have a stats class for different characters in the game. This class can get dropped into other classes, such as the character controller or maybe an NPC controller. Since this class isn't a mono behavior, we won't see its inspector unless we add an instance to a mono behavior. So let's add an instance of our stats class to our character controller. This approach makes use or at least encourages one of our favorite programming techniques, that being the use of composition over inheritance. In the stats class, we might include stats such as health, strength, and other commonly used stats, all of which 100% depend on the needs and the mechanics of your game. With Odin, we can add a progress bar attribute to give each stat a little more visual appeal, as well as getting our inspector to display a bit more information, such as the minimum and maximum values. 
While the default color is nice, we can also create custom colors with red, green, and blue values. This can be used to help visually group similar stats together. All of the additions and tweaks that we've made to the inspector of the stats class can be made use of in all other classes that will have an instance of the stats class. This reusability is one of our favorite parts of Odin. So again, we know this video has been different from some of our other videos. We wanted to emphasize and remind people, especially those who might be new to Odin, that Odin can be used as you go and as you create new functionality with your code. Odin isn't just for big editors or complex functionality. You can use Odin attributes as you write your code to make your code easier to use. So we hope that was useful or interesting and maybe even spark some ideas of how to use Odin in your project. And until next time, happy game designing.